Hello everyone, my name is Dan and I will be your Design Journey Art Class Expert for Drawing in Perspective. In this session we will be looking at two points perspective. So we will start by looking at some basic techniques and then apply what we learn to create a final drawing at the end of this session. Now whilst this session can stand alone, I do advise watching the previous ones if you haven't already. As always, to follow along with this session, you will need a pack of pencils, maybe an eraser, a sharpener. In addition to that, you'll need a ruler and some paper. So in the previous session, we had taken a look at one point perspective, drawing out some boxes using one vanishing point. Now here we are going to start by doing the same, except we are looking at two points perspective. So we will be using two vanishing points to do this. I tend to draw more in two points perspective compared to one or three points perspective because it seems to apply to more situations. Now because we are drawing in two points perspective and using two vanishing points, it means that two sets of parallel lines will be converging. Again, the best way for me to explain this is to show you in a drawing. So let's start as usual with a horizon line across the centre of the page and I am going to construct a box in two points perspective which will require two vanishing points. Now when drawing in perspective you will often find that the vanishing points are off the page meaning you will have to estimate the direction of your lines however for this example I will keep them on the page and I will place one at either side. You typically want these vanishing points placed well apart because if they are too close together you risk the drawing being distorted so let's keep them as far apart as we can for this example but keep them on the page. Once we have these vanishing points placed down I can start to draw out a box. So to start I will draw out the front edge of this box a vertical line. I will then take some lines from the top and bottom of this line to both of the vanishing points. Now the next step is to add the edges of these planes. Again, you can choose how large you want these boxes to be. For the edge of the plane on the left, I will place mine here. Then from the top and bottom of this, I am able to take some more lines to that right vanishing point. I now need to add the edge for the plane on the right and I will place this line here and again I can take some lines from the top and bottom of this to that left vanishing point. As I do this I am constructing the planes of this box and now all there is left to do is add that back edge and this can easily be found by seeing where these sets of converging lines cross. So that is how you construct a box in two points perspective. Notice how here there are two sets of lines converging to two vanishing points. Unlike one point perspective where there was just one. Now I went over that fairly quickly but do not worry because like we did in the previous session we are now going to spend some time drawing out a series of boxes in two points perspective. So let's do the same again and place the horizon line across the centre of the page and then place a vanishing point at either side. Now I start by drawing out the front edge of a box. The length of this line depends on the height of the box you are drawing. Now take some lines from the top and bottom of this to each of the vanishing points. Then I can add that edge for the plane on the left and take two lines from the top and bottom of that to that right vanishing point. Then I will add the edge for the plane on the right and take two lines from the top and bottom of that to that left vanishing point. Again, where you place these lines for the edges of these planes depends on the size of the box you are drawing. Finally, add that back edge at the point in which the converging lines cross each other. So now let's draw another box, this time it will be behind this one and I will make this a larger one. Instead of this first line being the front edge, it will be the back edge for the left plane. But everything we have looked at still applies, here I will just be adding that front edge afterwards. And so you can approach these however you want, sometimes you might want to start by drawing out one of the planes and then build the rest from there. As long as your edges for the box are converging to the vanishing points, it doesn't matter how you go about drawing these. You don't always have to start by drawing out the front edge of the box. Again, if you are following along, you will gain a better understanding of how to construct these boxes. Here I have drawn another to the side of this and I will continue to construct some more. 
Also remember that if something is above the horizon line, we will be looking up at it and in this case, see the bottom of the box. If something is below the horizon line, we will be looking down on it and see the top of the box. So here are a series of boxes at different sizes drawn in two points perspective. Again, I will outline each of these. So that is how to draw some boxes in two points perspective. And we will be doing a lot of that throughout these sessions. So I think it will be helpful if you do the same as well. Now for this part of the session, as usual, I'm going to end this by creating a final drawing. So here I'm going to be drawing a bridge over some water in two points perspective. And this might get fairly technical, especially as we are constructing the drawing, but don't worry, I'll do my best to explain the entire process and I'm sure you will learn something from doing this. So to begin, I will draw out what is going to be the picture plane for this drawing and I will also place the horizon line here in this example. It will be across the center of the page. Now for the vanishing points, I will place one to the right, this time it will be placed around here and the left vanishing point is going to be at the other side at the edge of the page. Again, we will be looking at some examples in a later session where the vanishing points are off the page but for now let's keep them here. So now I will start by taking some lines from the right vanishing point across the picture plane like so and these lines will be the top and bottom of the bridge we are drawing. Now I want to divide this bridge into three sections and so I start by adding a vertical line to the left there and then I add another two vertical lines to the right creating what is essentially a plane in perspective and then a small section at the end. Now if you have seen the previous session you will know about a technique that I used for multiplying planes in perspective. This technique is covered further in the session on working with volume, but I will also use it here. I take two diagonal lines to each corner of the plane that I am multiplying so that I can draw in that halfway line. Now I will take a line from the bottom corner of this plane through that halfway point at the end of that separating space I added, and I will extend this until it meets the lines converging in perspective. At this point I can then draw in another vertical line and I have just multiplied that distance and so now I need to add the other line for that separating space. Here I will just estimate this. Again, you could just estimate all of this, but that's your choice as the artist. I prefer to use this technique because it's a lot more accurate. Now I'm going to multiply this one more time, repeating the same technique, and then I add that separating space again at the end. The reason for this separating space is because between each of them, we will have the arcs for the bridge, which is what I will draw in now. So. I take some diagonal lines to each of the corners of these planes, ignoring that separating space this time in order to find the center point, and I'm going to add another line slightly above and one down below. Here what I am doing is adding some guidelines that I can use to help me draw in the arcs for the bridge, and these will be drawn within these two lines that I have just added. I also have the center point drawn out, which will be useful when it comes to drawing in these arcs. So here I draw these arcs in and these can be a pain to draw but thankfully these lines I had drawn out previously helps me do that. So you want to draw an arc in each of these three planes between these separating spaces. Now up to this point you might have noticed that I haven't even used the left vanishing point yet but now I will because I'm going to take a line from the bottom of each of the separating spaces to that left vanishing point. Once I have that done I will decide on the depth of this bridge and choose where to add another vertical line for the back edge. I also need to add a section of an arc here. Now we won't see the back edge in the other sections of the bridge so you don't need to draw those in. I'll just go over these again to make sure that these are more visible. This is something to consider right, when you are constructing a drawing, you want to keep your lines light so that you can work over them or even erase them later, but it's an issue for me when I make these videos because I also need you to be able to see these lines and so hopefully you can still see them. Now we are making good progress here, what I want to do next is extrude these separating sections out a little bit and to do this I just use both of the vanishing points. So here I am essentially constructing a, a thin vertical box on each of these sections. I will add two lines above on this bridge and at the point in which these cross the separating sections 
I will add some depth to them by drawing another short line heading towards that left vanishing point. At this point we are just adding some details and it's really up to you to decide on how you want this bridge to look if you are following along with this. Most of the construction is done now and I am just adding parts onto this like another line around the arches and a separating line underneath the bridge's arcs as well. At the back of the bridge I will also add a line from the left vanishing point. This will be the land on the other side of this water and so I will outline some trees and foliage that will be there. At this stage I am done constructing the drawing. So remember in the previous session when I mentioned that there is this process to producing a drawing which can be broken down into stages. Stage 1 is constructing the drawing in perspective, stage 2 is outlining and developing the drawing which is partly done when constructing the drawing anyways and then lastly we render the drawing. Well now I am up to the stage where I can start rendering this drawing. So here I'll put that HB pencil I used to draw all of this out aside and take a softer 2B pencil and I'm going to start creating a brick texture for this bridge. Here I am outlining the courses for these bricks and as you do this you want to be mindful of the direction of these lines. These still need to converge to that right vanishing point as with the lines heading in the other direction like under the bridge. These lines will converge to that left vanishing point. So here I continue to outline these bricks whilst I am also outlining the drawing as well. Now you also need to make these bricks smaller as they recede into the distance because remember that everything diminishes in size the further it goes into the distance. All of this applies to real life as well. Remember you can go stand in a street and you'll notice that everything further away is smaller. You'll even notice the convergence of buildings and everything around you. All of these things apply to when drawing in perspective as well because the purpose of drawing in perspective is to create the illusion of realistic space. So it's easy to recognise a mistake when drawing in perspective because you will look at your drawing and know that something isn't quite right. Your eyes can recognise this, more so when you have more experience drawing in perspective though. Anyways, here at the end of this bridge, I will also draw out another section which is mostly going to be covered in foliage and the trees that I will draw on the, on the other side. Once I have all of this outlined, I will start to render these bricks and add some shade into them. And here I apply a little more pressure as I work around the outside of these bricks and I continue to do this until the entire bridge has been rendered. Now as I get to the end here I start to draw out that foliage and some of these trees using the technique I had explained in the previous session when I was drawing trees. I create small circular motions with the pencil and I leave some separating space in between them. Don't worry at this stage if all of this is the same shade and it's appearing rather flat because we can correct this with a softer pencil later. At this stage we are adding some detail, rendering the drawing once and making sure that everything looks correct. I also shade in this section of water which at the moment blends in with the rest of the image but that is soon corrected because I will now swap over to the softer 6B pencil and I will begin working into all of this. I start to shade in the water here and right away you can see how I'm able to achieve a much darker shade with this softer pencil. I get to a point as I'm shading in the water here and I start to apply a little less pressure so that I can produce a lighter shade. Here I am adding in some lighter shades to represent the reflection on the water. I then start to work into this bridge, shading under the archways and adding some shadows. I also continue to darken some areas of the foliage and make some adjustments, adding some overall contrast to the image until it is at a point that I am satisfied with. And so here is the final result, a stone bridge drawn in two points perspective. So there we go, I hope you have enjoyed this session of the Design Journey Art Class and if you have created any of your own drawings then be sure to share them over on Instagram using the hashtag MyDesignJourney and tag me as well at DanBeashaw because I want to see what you are creating. Also I want to end each of these sessions by reminding you that you can start drawing now. 
as I did earlier in this session. Have a go at drawing out a series of boxes in two points perspective because that will really benefit you and help you become familiar with drawing in perspective. With that being said, thank you for watching and joining me in this session. Thank mm -hmm. you.